very serious biko what god cannot do does not exist not go and not know please Party. Yeah. keep watching this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe Party. tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend yeah. to tell sugar daddy that is sugar baby just keep in contact and that's one period please it's a very serious matter no matter how my facial expression is or why i said anything please take this very seriously hey guys welcome and welcome back to my youtube channel if you are new to this channel welcome cousin i love you like and if you are a tiny subscriber you know the vibes already period so guys i know you already read the title and you're like <gasps> yes yes that happened do follow me on all my social media handles they are going to be on the screen and do subscribe to my blog channel if you are in nigeria you know this saying who not go no no please be safe out there in the world not go and not no please so if i say rona you know what i'm talking about if i say axine you know what i'm talking about because youtube has a, have a lot of policy on talking about these two topics but they will see allow you to like share your experience and stuff don't forget to like comment and subscribe do turn on your post notifications so you guys get notified whenever i post a new video please stick with me we are back we are back on the youtube trend okay so guys it's not further ado let's get right into the video in july flashback i became very sick so i went to the hospital and tested for malaria and typhoid so i tested for malaria and typhoid like yes i have malaria and typhoid so i was getting treated injections drugs and everything so that was the first two weeks of july and i was like okay i'm going to get better after those first two weeks of july i was not getting better i was like ah what is going on like what is going on like to the extent i could not walk some days i could not walk like my legs would feel like it's paralyzed i could not walk somebody has to help me up so then the last week of july and the first week of august i went to the hospital again because i was like still sick what's going on tested malaria and typhoid so i was like oh, this is why I'm tired for it's not leaving me. And you know, I think the second time it was like so high. It was so high, like it was so terrible. I could not walk like a very short distance. Like a lot of things was just happening. And I was like, ah, what's going on now? I'm taking the drugs. Like, ah. So when I went back to the hospital, I got treated again. Malaria and typhoid. So, okay, when like the typhoid is very high, blah blah blah. I was like, okay, no problem. So I went again to the hospital. I was still going to the same hospital because that's where I go to when I'm sick. That's where my parents take me to when I'm sick. I went there again. The last week of August, yes, I went there again. And they were like, malaria and typhoid. But this time, the doctor was like, okay, let's check your organs. Maybe there's like an underlying thing that is making you feel this way. So they checked and they were like, everything is okay. Stick to your drugs. They see malaria and typhoid gave me injections and like i'm so sorry guys i'm still not getting better like do you know how frustrating it is like i'm so grateful to god so after then i was to do a checkup for the second week of september now we're in september very well first time i went to the hospital first and second week of july I went again last week and first week of August. I went again last week of August into first week of September. Then I went for a checkup after some days. I was still sick. I'm like, ah, what is happening? So my mom was like, okay, let's go to another hospital. We're trying not to lose hope, nothing, nothing. You know, when they treat you malaria and typhoid and you are not like inpatient. They give you in your butts. I don't know whether that's how it is around the world, but in Nigeria, if you're not inpatient, they give you in your butts. But 
if you are impatient or the, the, the condition of the sickness is high then they give it to your veins so my mom was like okay let's go to this other hospital so our family friend was like maybe it's because it's true like we should just try ultravenous injection like take the injection through veins maybe that would work faster and like rapidly clear everything and I, i'm like okay i just want to be well i don't even care about anything they want to do so my mom was like okay let's go to the hospital we went to this new hospital registered everything went to see the doctor and the doctor was like okay let's do the test again she they said it's my typhoid in your former hospital but we were going to do all the checks I, I just the first thing i said was like i have been treating malaria since july we are in september like please any other test you can know you can do do it and check what is going on he was like okay they did all that test they did ulcer they did different tests blood work then they also did malaria and typhoid again they're like yes there's malaria and typhoid in your blood but we are going to first of all clear that and go for that with more tests so they did test everything blah 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 and they gave me the ultravenous injection for three days so the first day they gave me your shavinous injection that was the first time i vomited in the space of these three months that i've been sick i've never vomited at all that was the first time i vomited so i was like oh, god maybe it's leaving my body now I vomited i was so weak so by the next morning my mom was looking at me she was like oh your eyes are like a little bit brighter than because i'm walking around look as if i'm not even walking i'm just like The second day we went for the injection so the third day we went for the injection that was the last dose of the injection i said okay the doctor asked to see me and i'm like okay he said how are you feeling now the feeling i had was like an out of body experience i don't know how to explain it, it was as if i was sinking into myself like i could not feel my tongue I could not feel my skin like if i rub my hands over my skin i could not feel anything i could not feel my toes you know what it was not funny so i explained everything to the doctor like i can't feel myself it feels as if i'm slowly falling falling down like from a very high place but i'm not getting to the ground you get that's the feeling i was having that's the only way i can explain it so when i told him i was like what else are you feeling i'm like by then, this was September 9th on a Saturday. <laughs> Can't forget that Saturday. September 9th on a Saturday. So I told the man that this is how I'm feeling. I already lost my taste. I already lost my smell. I cannot taste anything. I cannot smell anything. I was not hungry, but I just had to eat. You know, I lost my appetite, but not like totally yes that was it and anything i take put in my mouth it felt as if i was leaking metal <laughs> like it was a very odd feeling so i was like ah, abi is it because of this continuous pumping of injections and drugs in my system that is making me feel this way so that was what i told before we went to see the doctor so when i told him all these things he was like okay right now we have to take a covid test for you because First of all, the recurring malaria, and secondly, your loss of taste and smell. Are you having shortage of breath? I said no, I was not having shortage of breath, but I was having major body ache. It's, it felt as if eh, you know, pan, you, you do you guys know panebita? If you know panebita, if they are hitting their the cars, they are panebiting. That's how I felt. I felt like that car, like all my joints, my side, my back, my chest. Oh god, it felt as if I was getting pounds. Oh, mom. They say oh no go no no. Please guys don't go. I don't know. <laughs> Wear your nose mask. Wash your hands. Do everything that is necessary. I'm able to smile about it now because it's been a very long time. For like for, for me or oh, mentally, I just tried to tell myself it's been a very long time. So just have to relax and like move forward from the pains and everything. So that was on the night so he was like you have to get a covid test but the person that does the covid test for them in their hospital 
went to get vaccines for them so the person was not available so i have to either wait till on monday and come back to their hospital or go to another hospital i was like i can't wait for your lab specialist like the way i'm feeling is just i can't feel anything please i just can't feel anything so on the 11th they were like okay they referred us to a hospital where we are going to get the test done so i have all my papers and everything that i was giving the ones i was giving i have them so when we got to the hospital we when they asked us like what are you here for like we are here to do the covid test they're like okay is it for traveling because they have two they have the one for traveling and the one for like treatments and all that so i was like no we're not traveling the one for treatment so, like, okay. so we paid and went to the lab so that wait was like it felt like a thousand years waiting for us to be attended so it felt like a thousand years so when it was time i went to jesus like thinking about all these things that have happened just keep giving me body pain that's all i can see so i went to the testing place and it was my turn they brought out the swab and everything as you guys can see and they checked it so they say you have to wait for 45 minutes so we went to the section to go and wait that other 45 minutes also felt like a thousand years i was like what is going to be my fate for the test and the results came out the results came out on the 11th and this is my test can you guys see it it said positive the test came out positive and the moment i saw it i cried i just i felt defeated i don't know i just felt some type of way so we went to the hospital where i was to be treated got there showed them the results like positive okay they scanned it to their system and they, they were like okay we have to start treatment immediately i also quarantined for 14 days and also get another test after the 14 days my mom was my caregiver so she bought we stock up on fruits then thanks to my friend and her family i really appreciate you guys like a lot beyond recognition i appreciate you guys so they got me the immune boosters the immune booster and they sent it to me so that was also included if you tell some people you have covid there's a way they are going to act you know like if you are an african you know stigma is one kind of thing anything that is stigmatizing nobody wants to express more to talk about it get when i said oh sad this is the test the doctor this is the test check it oh positive let's start treatment there was no like his face I, because i'm a facial expression body expression person so i i was like as you mean they for one second just i think i would have just fainted right on that spot because i don't know so that reaction on everything just gave me a little bit of push that yes god is in control so we started everything taking the drugs taking the drugs every day was a different experience i don't know about other people but every day was a different experience like after in fact after i saw this result shortness of breath cough came okay, and just terrible if i cough you look as if my chest squeezed together like it was just it was and it's just something i will never want anybody i know you know a lot of people now will be like they'll be surprised <laughs> you know that nonsense trends that you guys remember that nonsense trends that was going around like in the beginning of this pandemic stuff where people were like eh, do you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that has corona <laughs> As an African, you know, we take a lot of things as it doesn't hold water, but they do. So, on this case, if you know me personally, or if you've ever met me in your life, you know me personally. So, I'm telling you, take this thing with 
mountain don't you say is this one hold water take it mountain please take it very serious be cool so every day was a different experience taking my drugs eating like my appetite vanished i was not totally as of appetite but i was not like mm. like i would just eat because i know i have to take my drugs and be fine that's just it like it's out of body experience don't experience it i don't wish this on anybody please be safe a lot of people are walking around with covid and they don't even know and people are contracting because me i didn't travel i didn't go anywhere i didn't come in contact with anybody that traveled so maybe it's not stigma because i survived what's my business like now you know i was cautious i did not go close to anybody because i was like what if i'm taking my drugs and i'm becoming better and i infect somebody close to me and the person dies like the two weeks just kept going day by day with god day by day with god day by day with god like it was terrible some days i won't sleep it's not even i won't most days i could not sleep i could not close my eyes i felt i was going to die in my sleep of shortness of breath that's how serious it was so i'm like god i'm grateful to you that i'm, I'm not put on that oxygen because that would the money spent already on this if i was on that oxygen so please guys take it serious so this kept going and going and going and going and so guys one of the breaking points of everything was i think was it not after one week the condition my condition was stained after a week i was like, ah. I was like i'm not going to die from this like god please i don't want to die from this please i know people are dying around the world but please i don't want to die from this and we went to the hospital and i told the doctor oh see how i'm feeling currently and the doctor was like okay let's do blood work let's do chest x-ray and let's do some other tests like just for your organs and all that so they did everything to my chest x-ray this is my chest x-ray yeah I asked me to come back on a tuesday this happened on a sunday yeah on a saturday you asked me to come back on tuesday for the proper reading of the extreme so that saturday till tuesday felt like a light year like god i was like if i go to this radiologist and they say this thing has got into my lungs when it gets to your lungs period but god said no God said no. What God cannot do does not exist. On Tuesday, I went, and the same doctor that asked me to come on Tuesday asked me that was it the one that asked me to come on Tuesday? I'm like, God, you are working your miracles. You are doing wonders. <laughs> and I went back on Wednesday, and the radiologist said oh yeah ma'am your result is very as you can see the heart is normal size and shape there's no active lung disease that was what i was looking at like, <gasps> thank you jesus so no active lung disease my everything was fine normal findings i'm going to put it on the screen yes. and when i saw this i'm like god what you cannot do is this and there's nothing anybody can see and that's a work period i waited like days two days after the actual two weeks and monday and my mom also took the her covid test because she was not that cared for me for the past two weeks so she also took her test and has to was negative and i also have to like wow two weeks with me in this house and you are negative but also grateful to god because I don't want to lose my mom. She's grown. So, yeah. My second result came back negative. When I saw this, I cried in front of the lab. People were looking at me because they didn't know. But I'm like, you the guys don't know what I've experienced in the past two weeks. 
You do not know, and I don't want you to know. I'm just trying to like lighten the issue, please. It's a very serious matter. I experienced it, and I almost died. So God was good to me, and as you can see, it's negative. And immediately I took it back to the hospital. I was getting treated, and I showed them, and they're like, okay, keep up the vitamins, your immune boosters, everything. Keep up with it. And I said, okay. So what of the vaccine? And they said vaccine will be done at the health centers. That's where they took the vaccine to. And meant they, after they saw it, I saw my doctor and everything. Instantly, I'm going to take the vaccine. I don't give a heck. I don't give a heck what anybody have to say. I don't know anything about like in depth about it. Go to WHO and ask them the question. After these two weeks, so this is my vaccination card. COVID 19 vaccine is safe and effective. On the 27th of September, that's when I took my first day. And my next dose is on the 25th of October. So, yes, I'm going to be taking my next dose of vaccine very soon. So, guys, please be safe out there. Who not go? No, no, don't go and don't know. End of flashback. Yeah, guys, that's about it. I am okay now. I am happy that God has hid me and what God cannot do does not exist. So guys, that's my experience. I'll share it to you guys. Hope you guys learned from it and please be. don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a sugar daddy that the sugar baby is back and it's giving content and that's my period. So my next video is going to be on either on this channel or on my vlog channel where I'm going to talk about why I cut my hair everything there is to know and like deep deep into the life update so take care guys i love you guys and i'm back and i'm happy to be back bye guys